I thought about just dropping you all right into the video, but I don't want to scare anyone off or make them think that they clicked on the wrong thing. So let me quickly explain what this exactly is. Basically, it's math. We all know what mashing is and we all know that it's risky, but how risky is it? Anyone who's ever mashed knows that they can get blown up for it, but they also know that they can be rewarded for it too. In this sense, a lot of people incorrectly treat it like a coin flip, 50-50. I either hit them, or they hit me. But that simply isn't the case. Against anyone with decently structured pressure, mashing is so much riskier than just a 50% chance to get hit. If someone leaves wide gaps by stopping and resetting their block string, or going for risky mix-ups, then you might feel incentivized to mash next time. But if they have multiple points where they can frame trap, then it gets riskier and riskier to mash even if you try to be random and unpredictable with when you do it. This is something that makes sense to most of us when we think about it, but it somehow still feels difficult to really understand it. So I've thought for a long time that it would be interesting to try looking at this idea as a math problem, specifically a probability problem. So I made one. A common situation in fighting games, translated into a solvable math problem. Here's an example of dependent probability in fighting games. You are blocking an opponent in a fighting game. Although they have several spots in their block string where frame traps are possible, you are confident that they will choose to reset pressure at some point. Since you don't know how long the block string will be, or exactly how many points there will be for them to reset pressure at, at each point you choose to flip a coin to decide whether you will mash or whether you will block. If your opponent has four potential frame trap points in this particular block string, each with an independent one-fourth chance of being a reset point, what is the percent probability that you will pick a correct point to mash? Alright, so we're looking for the percent probability that we mash at any correct point. Remember, we are the defending player, and since we don't know at what point they're going to mash or what point they're going to reset, we decide to flip a coin to decide whether we mash or block. So let's say that if we get heads, then we'll mash. And if we get tails, then we'll block. And remember, our opponent has four frame trap points, each with a one-fourth chance of being the reset point. So long as we recognize that we're looking for the total percent probability that we pick any correct point to mash, so long as we recognize that there's only four possible outcomes where we mash at a correct spot, this problem actually becomes pretty simple. We just need to find the individual probabilities of each outcome we're looking for, and then we can add them up, and then we'd be done. So what's the probability that we mash successfully at the first point? Well, it's the probability that we mash at all, which is just a coin flip, so it's the probability that we get heads, and that this is a correct point to mash, meaning that this is a reset point. Since we're looking for the probability of getting heads, that's just a coin flip, so that's 50%, or 1 half. And the probability of this being a reset point is just a 1 fourth chance. Since we're looking for the probability of both of these things happening at the same time, we're going to multiply them together, which just gives us 1 eighth, or 0.125. But what's the probability of mashing correctly on the second point? Well, this is where things get a little bit tricky, because we can't get to the second point unless we didn't mash before and it wasn't a reset point before. Think about it. If we were to mash over here, then no matter what, we wouldn't move on. If we hit them, then we'd get a combo, and if we were wrong, then they'd combo us. Either way, we wouldn't be blocking anymore. The moment we decide to mash, this whole thing ends. So we're looking for the probability that we got tails on the first one and that we get heads on this one because we want to mash on this one. But that's not all. We also can't get to the second point unless our opponent didn't reset before. Because if they reset, then that's a whole different block string and that's a whole different problem. And no matter what, whether we hit them out of it or whether they started a new block string, we can't get to this specific point in the original block string. So we're looking for no reset on the first point and reset on the second point. And you can see these two are what we want to happen on the second point 
And these two are what we need to happen on the first point in order to even get to the second point. And as long as we recognize that we need tails on every previous point and we need no reset on every previous point, this problem makes a lot of sense and it just becomes a pattern from here. So let's solve for the second point now. We're looking for the probability of getting tails and heads. These are both 50% chances. So let's just call this 1 half times 1 half or we can just call it 1 half squared. What about the probability of not getting a reset on the first point? Well, if there's a 1 fourth chance of getting a reset, that means that the other 3 fourths is the chance of not getting a reset. So this is what we're looking for. So this is a 3 fourth chance, and the chance of getting a reset is just 1 fourth. Multiply all these together and we get 3 over 64, or 0 0.04, six eight seven five what about the third point well it's going to be the probability that we get tails on all of the previous points so that's tails on the first point tails on the second point and then we want heads on the third point point. and as for the resets we want no reset on the first point no reset on the second point and then we do want a reset on the third point point. and since we have three coin flips here we can just write that as one half to the third. Since we have two no resets, we can just write that as three fourths squared, and we have one reset, which is just going to be one fourth again. Multiply those all together, and we get nine over 512, or this long thing. And last, the fourth point ends up being the chance that we get three tails, one heads, three no resets, and then one reset, which simplifies down to 27 over 4096, or this long thing. And remember, these are the only four probabilities in which we mash at a correct spot. So now we just need to add them all together, which gives us roughly 0 0.196044 or about 19.6%. So the total percent probability that we chose a correct point to mash is 19.6%. But we don't have to stop here. Although we found a solution for this specific problem, we haven't actually considered the risk or the reward for being right or wrong. Assuming that we're mashing with a light combo starter, that means we have a 19.6% chance of doing a decent combo that leads into pretty good momentum. But if we look at things from our opponent's side, they have an even greater chance of getting an outcome that's good for them. If we take the percent chance that we're right and we subtract it from 100%, then we can find all the remaining possibilities that aren't good for us. So our opponent has an 80.4% chance of getting an outcome that's favorable for them. And in the majority of these cases, we end up mashing at an incorrect point and end up getting frame trapped by most likely a medium or heavy starter. And since these are good combo starters, at a point in the match when we've probably already taken some damage as well, we are likely to get obliterated and lose a character. Compare this to the only 19.6% chance that we're actually right, and you can see how skewed things are in our opponent's favor if we're focusing on mashing while defending. But there's still variables that we aren't including here. Like if our opponent doesn't reset at any point, whether or not they have assists available, or whether or not you choose to never mash. So there's certainly a lot more to think about. Well, that was fun, wasn't it? Obviously, this is just one hypothetical scenario that I made up for the sake of having a problem like this. The way each individual person structures their pressure is going to vary, but the general idea that the more frame traps someone has available in a single block string, the more risky it's going to be for you to mash. But you're still going to feel like you're going to want to mash if they give you a reason to feel like you should have disrespected them. 
like if they just stopped their block string halfway through and went for a throw or a dragon rush. Or if they simply just stopped their block string early and started a whole nother one from scratch that now you had to sit through. But oftentimes there's more than one way to deal with these sorts of things. You don't always have to mash. There might be something else you can do to disrespect it. Or if you recognize that what you have to defend against is reactable or something you feel comfortable dealing with, then you don't have to take a risk at all. And if you're willing to just block and try to react and take fewer risks, then that entire problem we just worked our way through doesn't even apply anymore. Anyway, I hope you guys at least found this interesting, and hopefully it gave you guys something to think about. If you're interested in continuing to learn fighting games like Dragon Ball Fighters with me, feel free to subscribe to the channel. Or if you're interested in actually watching me play some of these games, head on over to my Twitch or Twitter to see when I go live. There's more on the way soon. Thanks for watching.